Okay, having another one of those moments where Facebook tells me that I um, shouldn't rotate my phone and I haven't rotated my phone. So once again, from sideways, hey, sorry about that. Um, I'm going to work on this dresser. This When I ordered this, I actually ordered this offline off of something like Wayfair or something like that several years ago. And it said wood, so maybe it's wood, but it feels like laminate to me. It feels like it's got a laminate finish. I believe it is laminate. Let me show you something else here. I don't know what the heck, where, for one, I don't know where the heck all this dust comes from other than I live in the country and that's the way it happens. But somebody has spilled, I think, wax maybe on here and then tried to scrape it off with something. And I've already cleaned this. I cleaned all this stuff this morning. So I may need another primer here. Some people may would want to put a little Bondo or wood filler and make all that smooth. If this, if I was doing this project for somebody else, I may would think about all that. But um, I'm wanting it to look a little bit distressed and everything anyway. So I'm not, uh, good morning, Cece. I'm really not worried about um, what that's going to look like afterward, but I'm still wondering if I should put a little bit of primer there, and I may, but because this surface is slick, I'm going to go with the Dixie Belle Slick Stick first, and what I've done so far is mixed myself up some cleaner and cleaned the whole thing off. Made sure that the wax, which is what I believe that was on there, was all removed because that will prevent the paint from sticking. And from all the pieces except this one, I've removed the hardware. And always the way, and I know I'm out of the picture a little bit here, but I'm sticking, let's see if I can put this up there for you to be able to see. The inside, sorry about all that dust. This has been in a spare room for a long time. But there's holes drilled in there that that hardware comes through. And you can stick a screwdriver in there and hold that spot and all that. What I'm doing is sticking my finger in there. Stick my finger in that hole and holding that screw still. And then I'm going to twist from out here. And boom, it's off. And then I will uh, take pop that screw out of there. And it's so short, you got to pop it out of there with something. And I got one of these little smell good straws that uh, from Zum, which is a, a natural air freshener thing. Anyways, put your screw back in your hardware right now. And if, if I was leaving these in here to paint, which is what most people do, uh, I would just put this hardware in these drawers. So you remember which piece of hardware goes to which drawer. That shouldn't matter in the long run, but uh, sometimes it does, so it's just best to keep it together. Now I could put a piece of scotch tape on these and keep them in there, but what I'm gonna be doing is let me get this in here before I forget it because I'm not going to use these on this piece uh, you'll see more of that later but I'm going to save these they'll be good on another piece later on I'm not going to trash them junk them or lose them but I've got let me see if I can turn this whole thing and you see I've got all the drawers out already the hardware off of the rest of them all of them cleaned and they're lined up right there ready for me to paint and then this is stripped down and ready and just as another fyi i got this marked down to half price it's a toolbox at uh tractor supply the other day and how cool is that for easily being able to tote all my brushes i've got some waxes up there and then inside here i've got some paint and some other carriers so i normally use like a 31 bag and i've got them everywhere this holds everything neatly and organized. But if you were watching, I did the nightstand for this piece already. I don't know why that's so bright. I, that's not bright enough. I did the nightstand for this piece already, and this is the chip brush that I used. And I put it in this Ziploc bag, and I put it in my refrigerator because I knew I was going to use it again. And I didn't want to have to wash it all out and worry about that. So... I'm gonna, what I did was put a tad of water in there too, and I probably put a tad too much uh, to keep it from drying out so it would be ready for me to use again. This is just a cheap chip brush. 
I'm going to use uh, the same brushes I used the other day whenever I start painting, which were the new, um, oh, na not natural bristle, but the unnatural bristle ones from Dixie Belle. And I'll use that when I'm applying the paint, but right now I'm, I'm using, and I'll use my paint pixie brushes for some of it, but right now I'm just using this chip brush to hurry up and get this slick stick on here. And what the slick stick does, this is by Dixie Belle, is take a slick surface like glass or metal or laminate or varnished or whatever and it make and it's like a primer but it goes on there and takes the slick surface and makes it accept the paint so then you can do after you get it on here and i did this on the other piece do a scratch test to make sure that none's going to scratch off to where you get back down to that slick surface so that this will last with the new colors that we put on here you know from now on for a good amount of time you don't want to go to all this work trying to make something look nice and then end up with a scratch and a messed up finish later on that would just be heartbreaking so I'm going to the extra step some people use uh, like the, I think it's Zinsser Zinsser 32 or 123 I think is uh, one that uh, I've used on other projects and that some people use but I wanted, I was anxious to try the slick stick and I was impressed and I'm gonna stick with this from now on uh, for my primer coat. Now they make something called Boss that hides other colors well that would have been a smart one to put on this black and that uh, is a good one to prevent like tan and bleed through if this was a wood piece and I had sanded off a little bit of the original finish because of somebody damaging part of it like you can see the wax on this one here and that would have been a smart thing to use or I may could just have used an oil base primer by the Zenser or something like that you can use whatever but I've not but since this is a slick surface this uh, Dixie Belle Slick Stick has worked wonderful and it will be what I use from here on out. And it gave me good coverage of the white. I mean, there's, I think they're making a clear, they have a clear, I've heard people talking about a clear, maybe it's just that they want one, but this has worked perfectly for me. If I had wanted to tint this, I'm sure I probably could have mixed a tad of my top coat paint in here with it to get a little bit of, you know, because it's highly pigmented anyway. Um, to get a little bit of color to start with Like with wall paints and things like that you usually if you're going with a deep color rather than white You would want to tint your primer a deep gray or a light gray if you're going with a lighter color. I went with the crinoline Or crinoline however you say it by DIY which is a an off-white color over this and with this over the black or this slick surface and it was perfect. It worked exactly how I wanted it to work. It did exactly what it was supposed to do. And when you find something that works how it says it's going to work, to me, you stick with it. So I'm sticking with it. I'm happy with it, and that's what I'm going to do. So I should have saved that till last and put all them drawers on there, on the top to paint it so I wouldn't have to be down on my bad knees so much. But anyway, I know there's... A lot of people, I have ladies almost every single day of the week coming in our uh, artisan market who are wanting to redo the furniture in their bedrooms and they're a little bit scared and they're trying to get their nerve up and they want to come talk about it a little bit. So I know that there, that's why I thought that this is probably boring a little bit to some of you at this point. And if there's, I can see there's a few people on there, but I can't see, uh, from way over here, I can't see the comments. So if you're there, hey, tell me that you're there and who you are so that I can look later on and know you were there. And if you have any questions, ask them. And I will, uh, you know, definitely come back and reply to them. But I know, you know, from having an artisan market where people come in to talk to me about paint, and I usually do a, a lot of pieces up there as well where people can come in and watch and I do the lives up there and stuff. I'm trying to get in this crease right here on the side is why I'm going back and forth over that. But anyways, there are people are afraid to start. They're afraid of messing up their piece and it takes a little while to sort of get the nerve built up and to know for sure what you're going to do. But that's the thing I always, you know, 
try to remind them, for one, it's just paint. If you paint it, you know, pink, which is what somebody was talking to me about yesterday, and then you don't like that shade of pink afterward, you just get some more paint and you paint it again. It is, that's, that's the beauty and the wonder and the amazement of paint. If I decide five years from now I want this spare bedroom to look, you know, boho, I can come back over this furniture that I'm doing right now. For one, I won't have to worry about the slick surface because this will already have taken care of it. But on the paint itself, I can paint this boho blue. I could paint it kissing booth, bright pink. I could paint it purple, which is my favorite color and change the whole look of the room again and you don't have to wait two or three years for that if you get the whole thing painted you know buttercup yellow and then you're like oh my gosh that's way too yellow for one you can try to tone it down with some wax for two just get you some more paint get you some more paint a different color if it's if you went dark get you some primer to prime back over it to lighten that up a little and put another coat on there that's the beauty of it. If you change your mind next week, if you change your mind next year, if you change your mind 10 years from now, once you've bought a piece of furniture that you like the style of, then you can change your room and change the look of it anytime you want with the power of paint. It, it's a, a beautiful, powerful thing that, uh, that gives us the opportunity to be able to fall in love with our furniture all over again without having to go to the expense, you know, without feeling helpless, hey, now I'm stuck with this and I don't like it anymore, and without having to go to the expense of, you know, spending $1,000 to buy a whole new or 2000 or 500 or whatever amount uh, to start all over again you can just take those bare bones take the bare bones of the furniture that you once loved and make it into something that you love again and that's you know the reason that i'm here showing you this whole thing because there's somebody i know who needs to see this today to go okay i'm ready i can do this but how do, should i use that slick stick or not should i prime it or not how do i put that on do I have to use a fancy brush to put it on with? That all of those things, I hope that I'm answering those questions for you. And if I'm not, just ask them and I will give you any kind of help that I can because I want every I want everybody to feel the freedom that I feel doing this. I want everybody to feel creative and to feel capable and to feel confident in just going for it just get out there and make your dreams come true make what you want your you know you maybe have ne have been you know I grew up poor and I never had a bedroom suit of my own period much less having one that I liked I had a cot in the living room for most of my life and then I slept with my mom after that but you know uh, you may have had a bedroom you loved as a little girl or you may have um, dreamed of having one and it's not silly to turn around and want that now to still want a canopy bed in a room that has pink flowers or green checks or Anything you want, you can have it. I give you permission. If you need if you need permission from somewhere outside of yourself to not feel foolish, to not feel silly, to like what you like, to not feel like it has to look all neutral and beautiful in case somebody fancy comes to visit. If you like it, don't worry about what anybody else might think. And just go in there and take a look at whatever piece of furniture it is or room it is or anything else. Just take a look at it and say, you know what? I don't care if anybody else thinks it's silly. I don't care if anybody else thinks it's 1972 looking or 1982 looking or 1952 looking for all that matters. If it's what you enjoy in your heart, 
that's what it should look like. I, I so enjoy, and I know everybody who comes in here probably thinks that my curtains that are full of birds on a wire in there in my sunroom are, they're definitely unique and a little bit unusual, but they're me, and I love them, and I'm happy every single day of my life when I walk in my door from work, that room makes me smile, and I feel like I'm a grown woman, and my house has been all of the colors in the way that I thought it was supposed to be for enough years now. Now it's fixing to look like I want it to look. Whether anybody else, I mean, I'm going to have a little respect for my husband, you know, if, if I'm not going to go too far out there uh, in the main part of the house. I'll do what I want to in my creative rooms, but, and, but, um, We fix in, when I leave here, this earth, and I am done, I will have enjoyed spending time in the place that belonged to me, and my kids can go buy a bunch of neutral paint before they sell the house, if that's what the real estate agent thinks needs to happen. But until then, every room here is going to represent the happiness that I feel on the inside. And I want that so much for everybody else who may have spent some time of their lives missing fun and happiness. And even if you didn't, even if you've always had every room you've wanted all your whole life, and you feel like you're not crafty and you've never had anything like that going on, you could still do this if you want. And hire somebody to do it who feels like I do and give them joy in your space. You could get addicted to this and just go to the flea market and buy pieces of furniture to paint just because you enjoy the peace and comfort of doing it. I enjoy the peace and comfort of doing it and I do just that. I'm going to look at an armoire Sunday that a lady has for sale that huge from the dimensions that she gave me and it's not really anything that's going to fit into the style of my home but somebody will love it I know they will so I am going to paint it with all the love in my heart and hopefully the person who it's meant to have will walk in the door afterwards and say oh my goodness I can't believe this. I've been looking for something like this, and that is going to go perfect in my living room, bedroom, den, dining room, whatever room they want it in. For my kid who's going to college, for my grandmother, my mom, a lot of people at our age start to have, uh, you know, the kids move out, but the parents move in. You know, your parents do so much for you when you're growing up. It's time to make sure that you can be there for them as they get older and need you. And sometimes you want to fix up a special room for your mom, especially if you knew maybe she never had a special room. Maybe she grew up poor like I did, and then maybe she gave everything she had to raising you and making sure that you had what you wanted. So maybe if your mom's going to move in, don't just stick her in the room in there in the corner that's got your Christmas decorations all piled up. Go in there and make her a room that would be a dream room for her or your dad get him a sports room or uh even if they're in the nursing home nowadays it's so much different than it used to be it's not like they're just in there in a hospital bed they get to have a sofa and a chair in there and a dining table a lot of times and fix their rooms up as if it was a bedroom at home they want them to feel at home and to feel comfortable you know it would be I wish, you know, my grandmother was still alive and I would have been able to do this at the time. I would have loved to, she lived in the senior apartments, I would have loved to have went and bought some pieces and painted them for her in her favorite colors and made her feel special and her enjoy her surroundings. You know, sometimes when you're not in your own home surroundings anymore, it's nice to have things that are familiar but, it, and, but it's also nice to have things where you know your kids put their heart into it and they made something special just for you. Those things become 
more and more and more important every single year of your life to know that when you weren't standing in front of them, that your kids were still thinking about you. And they took their time, which is so valuable, to do something special for you. So maybe it's not even a room in your house that you're supposed to be doing something for. Maybe you know somebody else that, you know, your kids are getting their first house, or maybe someone you love's house burned down, or uh, you have a, someone that's, you know, been in a long relationship and getting out of that relationship and going into her own place for the first time in her life or his life, and they're just having to scrape by with what they can until they can get on their feet good again. I bet they would enjoy a custom piece of furniture, something that came from your heart just thinking about them in mind. There's so much and so much more than just painting a piece of furniture that can come from putting your heart and soul into something and thinking about somebody else. And it's good for you too, or it is for me. I'm gonna be out of the picture here. Let me see if I can turn that around or where at least you're not just listening to my voice and seeing nothing. Let's see if I can get that out of the way. Turn it around there. And I don't think I can. Let's see if I can lower this a little. <laughs> There's our karaoke thing over there, talking about fun with the grandkids. Everybody thinks they're a superstar when they come over here. My little grandson Jackson, oh my goodness, he is a ham. He gets on the karaoke at Christmas time. Shelton and Jewel and Jesslyn, other grandkids, they all gonna be superstars one day <laughs> at something. They are all hard workers, but they serenade me quite often with the karaoke microphone. I believe in fostering their creativity and their talents and giving them the confidence. I believe that's so important. That wasn't as much instilled in me in the way that I do it. But my mother was extremely creative, and her mother was extremely creative, and they painted and sewed and baked and all the stuff that I do now, but I felt like I could never do it as good as they did it, but um, I was a lot younger and less experienced, and I, but I want, you know, my grandkids to feel that creativity and that confidence always. So I try really hard to always include them in projects. Jewel painted a lot with me this summer. Um, and she, she has waxed and painted and primed and polished and finished and top coated and made signs and all kinds of stuff. She's 10 years old. And hopefully she'll have those memories for the rest of her life of the time that we spend together doing things like that. And I've heard she's made a couple of videos on her own actually while I was too busy and we had been working on projects and I needed, you know, some of it to be done and asked her to. And she's it made my heart feel so good to listen to her in there saying I just messed up a little bit right there. That's not what I intended, but it's okay. Because when a, you know, if you grow up as a perfectionist, which I sort of did and she sort of is, um, it's hard on you. It's hard to always feel like, oh no, now I messed up and I gotta start over, my piece is crap, and all the, I can't do it as good as, and then name some artist, somebody who does it better than you. Well, yours isn't supposed to be like theirs. Yours is supposed to be like yours. And nobody is going to see your flaws but you. Because everybody else will think you intended it to be that way. And that's important. an important lesson that I probably didn't learn until I was 50. 
over 50. I'm gonna, that's where that messed up place is at. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that so there will definitely be a second coat there. But anyway, uh, oh, I got a lot on there. I'm hoping, just hoping. It makes my heart feel so good. And I, you know, I know that, that sometimes people are still shy, but I get a lot of pictures. People text them to me or people uh, direct message them to me and things like that of their projects. And I would love, love, love it if they would give me permission to share or if they would share directly and show that, you know, hey, since, and this is, you know, what the messages generally say, hey, look what, you know, watching you got me to start back up again. I haven't painted or, you know, I, I used to do toll painting or I used to do, you know, uh, cross stitch. I used to do, you know, uh, I painted my bedroom furniture one time when I was a teenager and, and I haven't done anything since. And, you know, you kind of lose that sense of freedom if you're not careful that you have when you're a teenager and I think you need to get that back but I get I get the private messages and the direct messages but I, I would love to share that stuff because whenever we can show that you know it's not just me here jacking my jaws that there really are other people who find their find their creativity and their sense of wanting to leave something behind of themselves and mark it, you know, um, when you're gone and your kids can say, my mom made this or, or whatever. I mean, that's important to me too, kind of morbid, but it's important to me. And you start thinking about stuff like that as you get a little more advanced in age. But when people send me their stuff, I'm so proud. And it wasn't me. It was never, ever me because what they have inside of them they've always had inside of them and I'm happy that you know maybe something I say or something I do by putting myself out there this way reminds them of the something special that they have inside of them enough to let them get started again and you know I, I hear from several who are like mothers and daughters who are reconnecting to do things and spend you know this is quality time doing something like this with your grandkids your kids your best friend your neighbor your husband whoever that's that's quality time that that is the definition of quality time because you're going to be doing something you love you're going to be proud of it afterwards you're going to be leaving something behind but it, the, it, the sharing, the sharing of, of yourself and of your time that happens during something like this is, uh, is priceless. It's invaluable. There's nothing else more important than your time and your love that you can put into things. Nothing else more important. Sometimes you don't feel that when you're younger because you feel the pressure of wanting it to be just right and you know thinking it needs to be a masterpiece or it needs to be somebody else's vision of perfection but my heart's going in here right now my heart's going out to whoever's watching this right now I mean I may or may not know you and may or may not ever but in my heart I know that there's somebody who needs to hear this, see this part, who it's going to help, and I hope that you share how that helped <laughs> on here so that my heart will be full too, and I'll get to um, have the joy of knowing that your creativity was re-sparked up, and that my time was useful to you too. So this primer, 
this slick stick. I um, don't have the, I have the Bible in front of me, but I, I'm not going to stop and read it right this second. I'm going to tell you what I believe, but always read the instructions on anything and do what the manufacturer says because they know their product and know the best thing about it. I'm digging, digging down in these corners that you don't even notice they're there when it's black and it looks as if uh, the mitered corners didn't go together well. But when the brown wax goes in it later, it's going to bring it out and, and it's going to make it look more special. But anyway, I believe that this slick stick says that it needs to dry for like 24 to 36 hours or something like that. I also believe that it says on there somewhere that it's dry within an hour. So I know that they understand the impatience of some people, but you know, you wanna do what, especially if you were making this for somebody else, what the manufacturer recommends because they're doing that for a reason for you to, they want you to get the best results because if you get the best results, you'll use their product again and again. You'll recommend their product again and again. And, uh, you know, they will have earned your trust in your business. But uh, let me just look at it here. It's water-based primer specifically made to bond to most any tough to paint surface with Dixie Belle Slick Stick surfaces like PVC, glass, Vermica, metal, and more are easily painted and stay painted. Clean and dry your surface so it's free of all waxes, oils, dust, and peeling rust or paint. If necessary, wash with white lightning, which is similar to TSP. After your prep, coat the entire surface. Let dry for one hour and recoat. Clean equipment with soap and water. Close after each use. Do not wash excess down the drain and do not freeze. So we can recoat after an hour. I don't know where I got that 24 hour business. I am not going to recoat the whole thing. I'm going to recoat because I tried this on the smaller piece and it worked. So I'm just telling you what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to recoat the top. I'm going to recoat the tops of the drawers where they'll get a lot of use. I'm going to recoat next to where the handles will be because I bought new hardware handles. I'm going to recoat where those are going to be. I'm going to uh, I'm not going to recoat those side panels. It will probably never, ever, ever be touched there. I believe with all my heart, and it worked with the other piece, that uh, one coat of this primer is going to be enough to uh, help the paint that you normally would not uh, need primer with anyways to stick to this surface permanently. So on the areas that are sort of high traffic, that will get high use, tops of the drawers, this top edge right here, where the hardware's at, your finger's gonna be touching it all the time. The very top and the corners and the edge of that surface, and maybe more on this little bitty drawer, because your hands will be more on it as you pull it out. I'm gonna put a second coat. These areas right here that go between the drawers will probably never get touched again forever hardly. So I'm not going to put a second coat there. I'm going to paint directly over that. I'm seeing a little bit of a run there. Uh, so I'm not going to put a second coat there because I'm thrifty with both my time and my products. Um, but the areas that I'm worried about later on, like there's gonna be lamps sitting up here and there's gonna be change thrown on here. There's gonna be books sat here and there's gonna be electronic devices sat here, grabbed back up with the fingernails. There's gonna be so much use on the top surface that I'm gonna put that second coat on there because I just don't wanna take any chances. So I'm gonna let that dry for about an hour, put a second coat on there and then next time I see you, we're going to be putting um, paint on here. Thanks for watching. I hope that helped you, and I'll talk to you soon.